All right. Thank you for your patience. Welcome all. Thank you for joining us for this webinar today on working with colors, color lists, and palettes. My name is Ishwar Ayer. During the webinar, please use the chat window and QA window. If you have general comments, put them in the chat window. If you have specific technical questions, put them in the QA window. My colleagues, Zheng Shao, James Chen, and Jennifer Swick are monitoring their panelists, so they will try to answer them. I'll try to keep an eye on the questions as well and try to answer them as I go along. Please don't send a private chat just to the host. That would be just to me. I may miss that because I'm busy with the webinar. So it's better you chat, send the Q&A and chat to everyone. That way my colleagues can help and I can monitor as well. This project and the recording will be available to you early next week. So my suggestion is please don't try doing things in parallel in your origin while I am presenting. Just watch the presentation, ask questions. Next week you can come back and you can look at the recording and the associated project file and review things for yourself. And then we are of course there to help you further. You can contact tech support with questions. You can just send an message and say, I attended yada yada webinar. I have a follow up question. Here's my data and we'll help you. Okay. On that note, if you go to our website, originlab.com, if you go to support, there's a button here, webinars. If I click on that, you can see upcoming webinars. On this page, we list only the next two days, so today and next Friday. So earlier today, we had an excellent webinar on working with graph layers by my colleague, Chris Drostowski. That will be put up on the recording as well. You can come back and watch that. Next Friday, we have webinars on advanced curve fitting and advanced peak analysis, but that's not all. You can click view all and we have the calendar set up all the way to end of August. OK, some of these are repeat web webinars, some may be new topics. Going back to the previous page, which is the main webinar page. Here is a button for all recorded webinars. So if you click on that, you will see there are webinar recordings from past many weeks. You can pick any particular topic, such as say signal processing, play the recording download the project file and work with that. Okay. Again, the recording will be available to you. It takes us a little while to get it from Webex. Sometimes we have to clean up a few things and then put it up. So early next week, you will get the recording from today's webinar. OK, I tend to speak fast. If I go fast, just let me know. I'm trying to deliberately slow down. Today, I will cover some basics about working with colors, color lists and palettes in various places in origin. Okay. So to begin with, let's look at some worksheet formatting. Okay. So the first example I have is I have here a worksheet with many columns of data, concentration one, concentration two, and so forth. Each is a pair, X, Y, X, Y, X, Y. So just for readability, what if I want to color the alternate pairs? So I can go to make the worksheet active, go to the edit menu, and there is a select option. If I click that, there is this dialog which lets you do selection based on column labels or by skipping columns. So let me choose skipping columns. I want to color two columns then skip two and start from column one. And there is a button here to test selective true. So they get highlighted. Now I can go to the worksheet. If I click anywhere inside, the highlighting will be gone, but I can click on the title bar and then I can go to the style toolbar and say fill it with a light blue color. Okay. Then I can come back here and say start from column three. Okay, 
and test select if true. Now the alternate pairs get selected. So I can go here and maybe fill it with another color such as light green. Okay. Now what if I want to color all the Y columns? So again, I can go here and say, select one column, skip one, start from position two and test select. Then all the Ys are selected. Maybe I can go bold those and maybe I can turn them to red color for the text. I can close this dialog, click anywhere to get out of the selection mode. Now you can see the worksheet is much more pleasing to look at. So this sort of formatting is easy to do. You could then save it as a template of it's the same structure of data that comes in again and again. Uh, just a nice way of presenting. You could, of course, export the sheet as a PDF and such. So play around with that. Let's move on to some more examples where now I'm going to look at specific values in the sheet and set the color based on values. So here I have three columns of data. Let me select all three, and I want to color them based on some conditions. So let me right click. And in recent versions, I believe maybe from version 2017, we introduced conditional formatting. So I can choose that. And then there are three options, highlight, heat map, duplicates. I'll show all of those. Let me first choose highlight. And choose I like dialog opens. It has already recognized my range selection. It gave it a name. I can leave it as a default or I can change it. Then it's asking what condition do I want to apply? So maybe I want to apply less than, and I want to color everything that's less than 0 0.1. Okay. I can click apply, and you will see that those cells got colored. I can do and and add another condition or rather or and add another condition here i can say greater than okay and maybe i want to color everything that's greater than 0 0.6 for example click apply okay now if i click close <clears throat> the formatting will stay and anytime i want to re revisit i can click anywhere on the formatted cells even a single one and go to conditional formatting and I can go to conditional format manager. This tool manages all of the highlights in my worksheet. I can have multiple areas, even overlapping areas and have different conditions depending on your needs. So I can go here and say, I no longer need this, remove. Okay, so then the formatting is gone. Let's look at complex example using statistics. So I select again, conditional formatting highlight open dialog, and this time I'm going to say condition one based on a custom expression. So here you can put expression and X means any value in my selected range. So here I can go and say, insert a function such as absolute of X minus, and there's a flyout here. I can choose stats and math functions. I can choose X minus mean. So I'm saying if the absolute value of X minus mean is greater than 1.5 star, and the flyout from stats, I pick standard deviation. So any value outside plus minus 1.5 standard deviation, I want to color it. So now if I apply, you will see those cells were selected. This is based on the statistics. So when you change your data, the selection will change and the coloring will change. Okay. All right, questions, please type them in the Q&A window. General comments, please type them in the chat window. <clears throat> now let's look at duplicates. Here I have genes from amygdala and hippocampus, and I want to mark all the genes are duplicates across the columns or within the category. So I just select both columns, right click again, conditional formatting, duplicates, open the dialog, and then I can choose here my duplicate, how to color it. 
background color for uh, text forward color foreground color these could all be changed we have a nice color well in origin in recent versions with many many colorless and palettes and such i'll come to all that very soon maybe i want to make this bold blue background and maybe i want white color for the text click apply okay click okay so now you see this particular gene appeared across columns this particular gene appeared within the column as duplicate okay so there that's another option for marking duplicates all right moving on heat map so we have heat map plots what i'm showing you is just to use the worksheet itself to apply a heat map so here i have a temperature for many different cities in continental united states i have sorted them by latitude so the northernmost city international falls minnesota is up here northernmost in my data set and the southernmost is down here key west florida and i have the temperature data for january through december let me select all of these columns right click all of the temperature columns conditional formatting this time i'll choose heat map and open dialog so now i can apply different colors a three color limited mixing for example if i apply that the colors will change better choice i can go load a palette origin ships with many palettes you can create your own you can bring in more palettes i'll show all that later on in the webinar there was already some question about bringing in palettes from other uh, products like matplot matplotlib let's talk about that later so let me click here and choose a palette there are many different palettes i'm going to choose one that we ship called weather temperature okay and click apply okay and click okay so now the purple and deep blue etc are the colder um, climates and the orange and uh, yellow and etc are hotter so one nice feature in origin in the worksheets is if i hold the scroll button of mouse and just click and let it go you get this particular cursor then you can simply move the mouse up and down if the worksheet is large you can also pan so now i'm just scrolling down to see how things look in my data right so visually you can examine the data with this color formatting to see variations okay uh, very nice feature and here there is um, even at a uh, supposedly warmer latitude a particular uh, town showed up as very cold in january that's alamosa california colorado which is in situated in a valley so it's usually colder than the surroundings and over here at the more southern latitudes you get much warmer temperatures across all months so nice way of visualizing the data already in um, a worksheet before even graphing okay any questions please type somebody said am i in mute yes by default all the participants are muted otherwise there are quite a few participants and if you all start talking that will be very difficult for us to manage so please use the qa and chat window so let's switch to graph and first i want to show you some basic things like coloring a graph page and graph layers okay that question came up earlier um, um, in, the, in the webinar that chris did so here I have a simple uh, plot with two different phases, semiconducting phase and superconducting phase in my TC versus pressure um, um, coordinate system. I just want to use some coloring. So let me just click on here to select the entire layer. And in origin, in recent versions, we have a pop-up mini toolbar that can do various things. Unfortunately, this doesn't have a fill color in it. Uh, we put in things that most commonly used. You can always request for more things and we can add them. But I can go to the style toolbar. I can go there and say, fill it with a red color. Okay, so now my layer is colored red. Let me double click in plot details to show you where that is. So in plot details, if you have watched Chris's webinar earlier today or earlier webinars about graphing, you have the graph page, then the layer, there can be multiple layers. 
Then the plot, there can be multiple plots. So if I go to the layer level, under background, you will see there is color. And somebody had asked earlier in last webinar, do you have like um, different gradient fills? We do. You can choose none or two color gradient. You can also set lightness. You can set it whether you want it from diagonal or vertical center out, many, many different options, similar to how you may have it in PowerPoint or other products. OK, I can also go to the graph level and go to display tab and give it give the whole graph page itself a color if I want to. OK, so let me apply some color. I can click this to collapse and then click OK. OK, now I want to fill the superconducting phase with a different color. So let me go double click on this line to again open plot details. And now you see it's at the plot level. And now I can go to pattern and I can say, sorry, let me go to line and there is fill area under curve. And let me go to pattern and under fill color, let me choose blue. Okay, I'll choose a nicer blue and then click apply. Okay, so now you see again it used a one color uh, transition here. So now you see this way. You can uh, uh, color the layer and color different areas. Uh, Origin has much more capability of coloring between curves and so on. I'm not going going to go into all of that because this webinar is more focusing on using colors. We have many recordings on graphing that you may want to review, and we have many examples on the graph gallery of such plots. Okay. Now to make this stand out, I can go here. I can click and I can choose a different color for my text. OK, so maybe I want that to be white. OK. All right. OK, good. Let's now go to text uh, objects and graphs. I'm starting with very simple things in the graph. We will transition slowly to color lists and grouping and all that. OK, so if I click on anything such as the text here, Again, the mini toolbar pops up in your version. If mini toolbar is not there, you just need to go up to the style toolbar here and use it. OK, so the mini toolbar makes it really convenient to make changes to your graph on the fly without having the mouse travel up and down. So if, if the mini toolbar disappears, just click shift and it will pop right back up. So I can go here and change my font, for example. I can go scroll down and pick a uh, favorite font that you want. I like Cambria. And then I can change the color. Uh, so for example, I can go here and say, make this blue. Uh, I can change my font size. OK, then there is a nifty feature in this um, mini toolbar. I can say apply formatting to and I can say font and size and it will apply to all the similar things in the K in the layer. It should. Let me see. Don't know why that's not working. Okay, the color applied and um, let me see the font did not font did not apply. Maybe um, there are ways of copy pasting formats and setting global fonts for the whole graph. I'm not going to go into those. That is all covered in webinars on graphing. I'm just focusing on the color part. Okay. Similarly, you can do coloring of axes and such. Okay. Sometimes the mini toolbar doesn't have the option. Then you simply have to go and select it from the uh, from the tools toolbar to do the color. Okay. Annotation. If I want to add an arrow, for example, I want to add a curved arrow. I can choose a curved arrow. Click, 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 double click. Okay. And then arrow also has properties such as color and such. I can select a particular object such as an arrow and assign color to it. Okay. And select this and select red and maybe add like a text. Press the T button to add text. Okay. Group three. Okay. Uh, in recent versions for drawn objects, rectangle, circle, we had those before polygon, we had those. We also added a regional tool in recent versions. So I can grow, go draw 
an arbitrary shape around my data clusters here. So I'm just going to first uh, draw them, and then I'll show you how to set the color and transparency. Okay, and then click again, go here. Okay, I didn't do a good job there uh, of catching all the points, but just want to show you. Once you click here, again the mini toolbar pops up. You can change the fill color. Let me change this to just say a blue color. Then I can go here and click on this and change the transparency. If the if you have an older version, you can always double click and go into the properties of that drawn object and play with all the color and the transparency and such. Mini toolbar just makes it a whole lot easier. So here, let me go change my fill color to green. Okay, and again set transparency. Okay, let me go here and change my fill color to red and change transparency. So just giving you ideas on making your graph more colorful, also with the objective of marking certain data areas and such. There is a nice cluster tool as well. We'll come back to that later. Okay, questions, please keep them coming. Type them in the Q&A window and chat window. Now I'm going to show you how to change, uh, how to define a custom color. We'll later show how to define custom palette. So here I have a, a bar graph, and I want to, the default is black. I want to change the color. I click on it. Again, I click the color well, or you click up in the toolbar button. The color well dialog pops up, and you have many different color options. You can pick different color lists. So for example, we even have colorblind safe option. So you can choose a particular option like a color. And we have the same color and multiple luminance available below. So you can choose a desired luminance and it'll apply. Okay. But what if you don't like any of the colors we have? Then you can click here and click on custom. Click on this button, empty cell. And then this dialog opens where you can move the cursor around to pick any particular. Um, color swatch and then move this up and down for your uh, luminance or if you know the RGB value, you can enter it yourself. Better yet, if you have an image imported into origin or another graph that a colleague sent, you can click the dropper and walk around and pick a color that you like. I just happen to have some leaves here. So let me just pick a nice color from here. So I chose that, I click OK it got added to my custom color. So next time I come here, my custom color will be there. My recently used color will also be there. So these are many colors that I used recently. I can pick from them. So if you have favorites um, that you keep repeatedly using, you can of course put them into a list. I'll show you later, but you can easily define custom colors. Let me just go ahead and define one more. This time I'm gonna pick a lighter green, okay? And click okay. And now if I go to my custom, I have two colors. You can have many number of custom colors, okay? All right. Okay, uh, later in the webinar, we'll show in the upcoming 2021 version, somebody already asked, we are, we are gonna add capability to pick colors, all the colors from an image and create a palette or a color list, okay? I'll show that later. Okay, let's now come to a bit more complex examples. Here I have a nice graph, a two layer graph. In layer one, I have bar uh, column plot of sales and layer two, I have transaction price for the same uh, model of different cars. And I wanna show you how to customize one particular point. Okay, so if I click in layer one on the column plot, it selects the entire plot and fades out everything else. If I click again, okay, let me see. I go to layer one, okay, click once, click twice. Now everything else is fed except that bar. So this is the highest sale and transaction price. So I want to color that differently. So I can go in and say, use a fill color, let's say color brain safe green, okay. Then I can click on another point here. This is the lowest sale and lowest transaction price. I can come here and click and choose, say, just red, okay? Now, uh, let me also color the point. So I'm gonna go to layer two, and this time I'm gonna click on this symbol here. 
that gets highlighted. I click again, second time. So only that particular flaw data point should get highlighted. Let me see. Sometimes the selection is a bit tricky. Uh, that particular point got highlighted. Now I can go and change the fill color of that particular point. And I want that to be a light green, for example. I could do other changes to it. Sorry, I changed the border color. I should actually change the fill color. So to light green. So now you see I changed that. Similarly, I can click on this particular point. Okay, uh, and click and select and click again. And then I can go change my fill color of that point. So you get the idea. So if I double click, I just wanted to show you in plot details. When you customize individual points, what Origin does is to create additional entries inside each plot branch. So in the first plot, which was a column plot, I customized two bars, so 0.4 and 0.5. In the second plot, I customized 0.4. So if you click on it, you will see there's a whole new entry. So you can go further, customize it as you like. Okay. So just wanted to show you that's how control points, that's what we call them, or special points can be created interactively, and then you can go into plot details and customize them further. Okay. I'm going through a lot of features here. The idea is to present you with many different possibilities. So you can sit back later, watch the webinar at your convenience, the recording, play with the data that I'm using here, and then you can come back and ask questions, okay? Of course, during the webinar, please feel free to ask questions. So another <clears throat> aspect where color is useful is when you mask data. So here I have some um, data X versus Y, and this point appears to be an outlier. We have outlier tests. You can watch statistics webinars on how to do that. I just want to mark this as an outlier. So there is a mask tool here. I can click on that and there are several options, mask on active plot, mask on all plots. I only have a single plot. So I click mask on active plot and I can draw, go draw a rectangle. And you see by default, origin uses red color to indicate the mask. If I go look in the worksheet, the cell corresponding to that data point is also colored the same color. Now there is a button at the bottom here to cycle the mask colors. If you don't like red, you can use different colors, okay? Depending on what your graph looks like and what you want. So now I'm using magenta. So just wanted to let you know here, I did not simply control click to make a control point. I masked that data. And once you mask the data, it will be eliminated from fitting and statistics and such. You can see, fitting webinars to see how that is done. Okay, moving on. Origin has several places where you can set a color as auto, and that does some cool things. So let me show you some examples of that. So for the first example, I'm gonna open the learning center, which is F11 key. It's also available from the help menu. So if you click F11, we have this nice learning center where you have graph samples, analysis samples, learning resources, some preliminary tutorials, links to our YouTube channel and such, okay? Um, so you could play with all those. There is a technical blog, user forums, our social media links, all of that is here in the learning center. Here you can choose different categories of graphs. I chose multiple axis graphs. And I'm gonna open this particular graph. Let me open and then explain. I'm not going to go into the details of how to make this graph. It's in the plot menu. So I have basically three quantities I have plotted, three different Y values as a function of one X value column. And they all happen to be different magnitudes. So I can use a three Y Y plot so that each quantity has its own axis. Okay. How to do this? There are tutorials, there are uh, webinars on graphing. Okay, what I wanted to show you here is one cool thing. If I go click on the symbol and let me just change the color of that symbol to say magenta, you will see the axis title, the axis ticks and the axis labels all followed that color. The reason for that is if I click here and click on color, you will see it's been set to auto. 
that's a choice some templates do it some don't okay but you can always set it as auto when available so what auto here means is follow the symbol color okay so there is a hierarchy here similarly i can go here and i can change it to another for another layer maybe i want this to be green okay and then that will follow okay so that's one example of auto let me go show another cool example of auto color so here i have some spectra measurement of excitation versus emission map at different wavelengths i'm going to select them all and i'll go to the plot menu and under basic 2d i'm going to choose stacked lines by y offset so that basically creates a nice plot where the y values are offset so i can see them that the, so these are not literally the values they are offset so it's more about comparison let me get rid of this legend that's not so interesting to me i want to show you how to annotate this graph by taking this excitation value so each column is 600 is the excitation and all these values are the emission 640 is the excitation these values are the emission so what i have plotted is the emission versus wavelength and i want to take the excitation which is the control parameter and put that at the end of the line okay so let me first double click on one plot okay and open plot details and it opened to that particular plot under layer one let me just collapse this so you can see better and there is a label tab so if i go to the label tab i can enable labels if i simply enable label it's going to put a label on everything okay which i don't want so i only want to show the label at a specific a point so uh, origin has a notation saying show label at zero okay for some reason my dialog messed up why is that that's really bizarre okay let me kill and start again okay i have not seen that on my laptop before okay go to the label tab okay these are the buttons that i wanted so i go to enable and i go show at specific points and show at point zero and click apply so what it did is by default it chose the y value of the last point and showed it there i don't want the y value i want a custom notation again there are webinars on this i'm not going to spend a lot of time explaining the syntax origin has very specific syntax on do you pick up the value from the long name or do you pick it up from a user parameter row the first user parameter row is d1 that's where i have my excitation uh, input parameter i click that i got my 600 then i click here space uh, nanometer i can add my own literal text i got that click ok now i can click here and use the mini toolbar to say turn it on for all curves okay if you don't have the latest version you just have to cycle through each curve in plot details and turn on the label okay there are other ways to do that my focus here is to show you the coloring all of this is black but i can click and i can click on color and i can choose auto now you see immediately it followed the line color so that's a cool way of adding text to annotate your line plots and have the text follow the line follow the line color the same thing can be done in the legend as well i just chose to put it at end of the line rather than inside a legend okay so we are about halfway there let me now move on to increment list okay questions please keep them coming um, i see things have been quiet in the chat window and the qa window Hope you are following along. Um, your questions are appreciated. My colleagues are helping to answer as well. Okay, let me check to see if everything is okay. All right. Okay, moving on. Let's now look at some more CX examples of indexing and palettes and such for the rest of the webinar. So first I'm going to show you taking a bunch of columns and plot them and how to manage color. <laughs> okay, so here 
I have a set of selections, sensor one, sensor two, sensor three through sensor five, five sets of data, X and Y. So let me just choose, click here to select all the columns and I'm going to go to the plot menu and I will go to basic 2D and I will create a line and symbol plot. Okay, so origin automatically already assigns different colors to all of um, the entries, okay, that I selected. So let's spend a few minutes to understand how that works. Okay, for that, I am going to click on object manager on the left here. It's usually docked on the left, and I'm going to stretch it out so you can see it. Okay. The object manager is a quick way of looking at the page and layer and plot level without having to open plot details. So if you look here, the object manager is saying this is graph 14. There is one layer called layer one. Layers could be given names. There is one group called G1. And inside the group, there are five plots. So this has to do with the concept of grouping in origin. When a set of plots are grouped, origin typically in all the templates gives it cyclical colors. Okay. Now, if I click on any of the plots, okay, in the latest versions, you get this pop up mini toolbar in the past two or three versions. I forget, maybe three versions ago, we introduced mini toolbar. But then we have this nice feature of group versus individual. So let's say, I'm looking at a particular curve. I don't like this green curve. It seems to flatten out too quickly. I want to change the color of that. I can go to individual and then go to my color here and turn that to magenta. So that turned to magenta. I can go to the line. I can click that magenta as well. Okay. But if I click and choose the group level and click here, you will see then you have the options of single color which would assign the same color to all the plots or by points. I'll show that later. I can give a color to each individual points or by plot. So what origin did by default is it chose by plots, give it a color and it happened to choose the increment list called candy. I can click here and say, no, no, I want color bar, um, let's say moderate, or let's say colorblind safe eight. So now you see all the colors change to the color list called colorblind safe eight. And you can see that here in the object manager as well. Okay. Now, this all depends on grouping. So let me explain that a little bit more. What if I plotted only one curve? So if, if I go here, go to the plot menu and choose my line and symbol, and plotted, I have one curve here, right? Now let me go choose this Y, hold the control key, choose this Y, and when you have columns chosen like this and you go to the edge, the cursor changes in origin, you can drag and drop, okay? So it's asking, do you want to rescale? I can say yes. And then now if you look at the graph, it got a little messy. In layer one, I have an individual plot and I have a group of two, okay? The object manager is really good in working with groups and changing things. So I can simply right click here and say ungroup. Then I can click here and shift and click all of these, or rather, let me see, how do I select them all? Uh, um, I think for my grouping, I have to set Let's see. Set as group begin. I want to begin the group there and origin automatically grabbed everything below that and put it into group one. Now, if I go here and if I tr try to change color, let me choose that same palette again, color blend safe. You will see that it will choose the first three colors. These are different luminances, so I can choose a different luminance level. So you see that it shows that luminance level, not a good choice. Um, it is too too light. Let me go change here and change this to a darker color. Okay, so now it's behaving like a group. Okay, so just want you to understand how the uh, color list behave based on group or not. 
Okay. I'll show more examples of this. Okay, as we go along, so you will learn more. Let's now look at a case where I do not have multiple columns, but I have indexing. So I have here a recovery data from a drug a study where I have three different drugs, drug A, B, and placebo, and also gender male versus female. I want to plot this as a grouped plot, okay, and then see how coloring works. So I'm going to choose from the plot menu, uh, click and make the worksheet active and go to the plot menu. And I'm going to choose under categorical, I'm going to choose group uh, plot. And let me see, group column, okay, with index data. Okay, so now I can uh, have a preview here in this dialog. It's a nice dialog. I can decide my data is the recovery data. Okay, and my group, I have two different groups. I have my gender group and I have my drug group. So as I click, you see origin is already modifying the preview. So it put the gender down here and the drug there. If I don't like it, the order, I can click and change the order. So now the primary uh, separator is drug and the secondary separator is uh, gender. So click OK. So now you see, it's using a color list and let's see how it assigned this color list, okay? So if I double click and open plot details and go to the pattern tab, you will see that it's using indexing, okay? Using a particular color list. I can click here and change my color list. I can go back to candy, for example, and click apply and that will change. But more importantly, it's saying index the color based on gender, okay? But I can change that. I can go here and say index the color based on drug and click OK. So now you see drug A has one color for both male and female. Drug B has another color. Drug, drug placebo has a third color. So it's very flexible in origin when you have group plots with indexing to decide how to assign colors from a list to what category, is it category level one, category level two and such. Now I can go and turn on pattern if I want to. So I can say, turn on pattern and I choose by points or rather, let me see. By points, single, okay. By points, use column values. I can say base it on gender and then I can choose different pattern from my pattern list, okay? Um, so there are several options for this as well. I can choose different patterns and apply them. I don't know why it's not applying to my uh, increment from use column values drug. Oh, I didn't click apply and use, um, I wanna index it based on gender and I can use my pattern color. Let me say I want it white and click apply. So now it used different patterns for um, the male versus female in the plot, okay? So different options for indexing, not just color, okay? Uh, coming back to the earlier one, I forgot to mention, you can also do indexing based on, um, um, for the symbols as well, okay? So there are many different options and I'll come back to that later on how to customize those, okay? Let me move on now to do, what if you do not have an indexing column and you want to create one, okay? So here I have some measurement of recovery versus age of different uh, drugs, for example. Let, let me first, uh, I have the drug in column A, all the symbols are the same. Let me first map the symbol to the drug. So I can go here and click this. Um, Better yet, let me just show you inside plot details because some of you may have the older version. So at the plot details level, if I go to the plot level, uh, I can then go here and choose custom construction, okay, under the symbol tab. And then I can say, take the shape and vary it based on the drug and click apply. So now each drug is denoted by a different shape. Let me make this a little bigger. Let me make it 15 so it stands out more so you can see. Okay, what Origin essentially did, 
it used a shape list, a new tab appeared. So if I click on the increment list, you will see there is the increment list. I have three entries. The first one is a square, second is a circle, third is a triangle. I don't like it. I can drag the diamond and move it to the first. I can drag, um, say, a cross or whatever I want to adjust. I can drag upper triangular here, okay, or lower triangular here, and I want the placebo. Okay, I want the placebo to be diamond, for example. So now I change my list. Now I can click apply. Okay, when you change list like this, you can right click, you can save increment list, okay? Or you can copy increment list and paste to another graph. So the idea here is if I save this, I can call it my symbol, symbol list, okay? Or give it some such name so that next time you have a similar graph, you can simply load from that list. Right click, you can load increment list. Also, once you save it, it will also appear for you in the choice for, for selection, okay? All right, now let me go uh, mark this group and give them an index. So for that, there is a nifty tool here under gadgets. There is a um, cluster gadget. This is available in Origin Pro. And with this gadget, I can go choose a particular color for my ROI. I can choose whether I have want a rectangle or a circle. Click OK, and I get the selection um, ROI thing. There are many, many features of this gadget. I'm just focusing on creating groups. So I want to call this as group one, group two, group three, group four. So there is a button here to create categories. I click on that, and this says, what do you want to call it? I want to call it group, and I want to give it the number one for the first one. Okay, I want to color the category, and I click OK. So now that category is colored. I'll show you in a moment what it's doing to the data. So again, I stay with the same name group, and I call this two, okay, and click okay. Unfortunately, this dialog doesn't stay up. It should be possible to change that so it stays up. I have to keep, there is no apply button. So maybe we can improve that. Click okay, and then go to the fourth one, and click, and enter four and click OK. And now I can close this dialog. So basically I made categories. So if I go look at the data, what Origin did was it introduced a column called group. It was not there before. I should have shown you the worksheet before. And it put in the numbers one, two, three, and four for the categories that I just created. Then you can go here and do things like filtering. I can say eliminate group one or whatever you want to do. So this gives you a visual way of identifying, creating categories at the same time on the fly, indexing the color. So I can click here and then um, click on the color and you will see it's using the classic list. I can go change that to candy, for example. So now my colors are changed. So once origin understands there is indexing, then you can use that, it can use that to assign color list, okay? Somebody's asking, can you apply statistic to gadget feature? Yes, I'm not going to go into that due to lack of time. We have a statistics webinar in which we went over the gadget. Okay, so now let's switch to uh, heat map, contour plots, etc. Okay, so Origin has many different possibilities of plotting data, which is either in a matrix or uh, a contour. Um, or X, Y, Z, I apologize. So uh, let me show some examples of that. So here I have X, Y, Z data, okay? So I'm gonna take this and create a plot, a contour plot first and show you how to work with colors. So if I go to the plot menu and go to 3D, there are several choices here, sorry, go to contour first, several choices here. I can do a contour color fill and it takes the data Origin does um, certain triangulation to make uh, the plot. You can do this from a matrix too, which is a 2D array. Origin has a matrix window too. I will show you that in other samples. So now by default, depending on the plot type, Origin may assign different colors. Okay, the color scheme uh, is template dependent in this particular case, okay? If I go uh, to heat map, I may get a different, uh, 
uh, option here. If uh, there's a binning uh, dialog that comes up and then it created a rough heat map of the data. Of course, I can make the binning to be more finer, but it's using a different map. So let me show you where the map comes from. So if I click on this object in recent versions in the mini toolbar, I can click on the palette button and it will let you pick a palette from here. OK, in older versions, if I click a palette button becomes available here, I can go here and choose palettes. Before I do that, let me double click and open plot details and show you. OK, in more detail. So here's a graph level, here's a layer level and here's my contour plot. So the contour has many different controls here. One of them is fill. If I click on fill, I can choose many different ways of generating colors. The default for contour is introduce other colors in mixing and take two colors and blend them. I can choose a three color mixing. So I can say blue and white, but introduce say yellow in the mix, uh, or maybe I want white in the mix, okay? And then if I click okay, and if I scroll up and down, you will see that some of the colors in the middle are more towards the white side, okay? Click apply, so that changed. I can click on fill. I can choose instead a color list like we saw before. If you have fewer levels, color lists usually have only few colors. So if you want only a few levels, you can choose a color list. The risk with color list is if there are too many levels, the color list will just keep repeating. So different contour values will have the same color. Okay, so color list is not appropriate typically for contour plots. So I can go load palette. Then there is a whole selection of palettes that we ship with. You can import any Microsoft.pal file in current versions of Origin. In the next version, we are going to support many different formats. So let me choose here, for example, topography one. Okay, sorry, I chose temperature. Let me choose topography one and click OK. And now my palette becomes topography palette. Now, there is also level control. If you click on level, you can decide how many levels there are in your contour plot. The same applies for heat map, same applies for 3D plot. So I can say here, keep my major levels 10, but give me maybe 15 uh, minor levels. So then it tells you what's the total number of levels. I can go here and say, how about 20? Then I get more. A palette typically has 256 colors. The point here is I can keep the major levels simple, uh, fewer, add more minor levels and click. And essentially, it will make the plot more smoother. More colors will be used. So now the number of colors has increased. So depending on how large your palette is, which is typically 256, you can have up to 256 levels without repeating colors to make your plot really nice. At the same time, keeping the contour lines only at the major level, because line has a control show only on major level. Okay. There are many options for customizing contour plot. That's not my goal here today. I just wanted to show you how to use palettes and color lists and such to change the colors. So I already showed you colors here. Uh, one small note, when you link to a palette, okay, if you load a palette, uh, select a particular palette, let me just choose uh, spectrum palette this time. I'll, um, okay and click OK. I just wanted to show you there is there are multiple options here. You can flip the palette. You can also stretch the palette. Stretch means choose all colors within the palette, like skip and select if you have few levels. OK, you can also link or unlink to the palette. If you link to the palette, all the colors are locked. If you unlink, then you can go change a particular color. So let's say I want at the value of 990, I want to make that white and click OK, and then again click Apply, and you see a white contour line up here. Just want to let you know a palette needs to be unlinked before you can change individual colors in the palette. Okay, there's a quite a lot to unpack here. I am trying to show you the capabilities so you can come back and later explore with your data um, and make beautiful graphs with your own choice of colors and palettes. Okay. Uh, a note about setting levels. I just wanted to show you some variations. I have a very simple metrics here. I have four, five columns and 15 rows. I just set them all to be two 
block of two, block of one, block of zero, block of minus one, block of minus two, just as a simple case, so that you can see bands here. And I just wanted to show how this color scale works. There are many options for this color scale. So let me open the color scale by double clicking. In recent versions, we added many options here. One of them is I can have separated uh, color scale. So if I apply that, it will break up the five colors into ranges, you see. So now it's more clear. It says between minus two and minus 1.2, it's dark blue. Minus 1.2 and 0.4, it's a certain color and such. And that now depends on the level. So I can double click here and go to the level. Origin by default shows some really strange levels, but I can go here and say, go from minus 2.5 and go to 2.5 and go in increments of 0.5, for example, okay? And don't give me any minor levels. Click zero and click okay and click apply. So then you will get level, a particular level exactly covering zero or between 0 0.5 to minus 0.5 and such. So there are many different options for playing around with the level, managing the level, and also the colors. Just keep in note here, it's a little confusing. This color really means zero to minus 0.5. So the way to read it is anything from two to 1.5 is the dark red, 1.5 to one is the lighter red, one to 0.5 is the even lighter red. So it goes, it straddles across values. There is also a before um, low value color, Say, for example, any point that is below my lowest value, I can give it a different color. Any value that is above my uh, particular value, I can give it a different color. So play with those options as well and see how that works for your data. I just don't happen to have any values above or below in this simple case, okay? All right, moving on, a few more examples. I just wanted to show that we also have a feature of copying and pasting colors. So here I have two graphs. I took this graph and basically made it nicer by putting colors on the uh, background of the page and the layer and give it a nice shading and use a different color scheme for uh, the plots and such. If I have something like this, I can click at the group level, right click and say copy format. Then I can come click on this particular group, okay? And right click and go to paste format and there are options, paste format to symbol size, paste format to what, paste format to plot colors. So if I choose plot colors, the colors will get transferred. If I choose outside of everywhere and right click and say copy format, then I get options such as do you want all style formats? Do you want all colors? So let me choose all the style formats. Then I can come to this graph, right click and say, paste format, Every, all the styles would get uh, ported here, okay? If I come here, right click and say, copy format, all, everything gets copied, including dimensions and scales and whatnot, and right click and do paste format. Now my graph dimension changed too, to match the other one. So just wanted to show you that flexibility, copy format is a double-edged sword, to be honest, it works well if you know what you're doing, which part of the format you're copying, plus if the graphs are similar. So if you work with very dissimilar graphs, things may not work that well. Uh, here is another example. So I can right click here and right click and say copy format. I can come to this plot, right click here and say paste format two. In this case, origin recognize that, okay, you are working with color maps here. So you can choose only to the color map or color map including the levels. So if I choose only color map, it shows that and it also carried over the line styles and the labels and such, okay? Different options. Okay, now how to create, let me end with some examples of how to create colorless and palettes. I already showed you in plot details that if I have a plot which has uh, colors, I can go into the detail level. Uh, let me choose a different plot. Uh, let me go to group versus individual plots and I have some colors here. Um, let me click on this and assign a symbol color by plots and let me choose, let's say uh, candy. 
and click, click apply. And if I double click and go in here, you will see that there is increment lists here. OK, there is uh, symbol type, symbol edge color. So what I did was I changed the symbol edge color. And each of these entries, whether it's symbol type or line color or symbol edge color, depending on your plot, you can click this button to open the increment editor. This is where I showed you earlier. You can shuffle things around, create your own list. You can click and select a different color. You can make a palette like this yourself, right click and save increment list. OK. There are other ways to make palettes. I'll show that in a moment. Just wanted to show you very simple way is come here and change an existing list to your desired order or desired colors and save it for future use. Now, when you make a plot, where does origin decide which color list to use by default? So let me show that. So I chose a bunch of uh, columns here. And if I go to the plot menu, and if I choose my basic 2D and my line symbol, how does it decide to get these colors? That is decided in origin in the preferences dialog. So let me drag this down. My WebEx is interfering with the menu area. So if I go to preferences, there is theme organizer. If I click on theme organizer, in recent versions of origin, we have a system increment list tab. This is where origin decides what to use for edge color, what to use for fill color, what to use for the shape list, what to use for the interior list, what to use for the border color and so on. But please note, palettes are not here. There is no default palette that's applied to every possible graph. Palettes are still dependent on the template. So if you change a palette and save the template, it gets saved with that template. We may introduce something here to put a default palette so that all 3D plots such as surface, contour, everything will pick from that default. We haven't done that yet, okay? So if that's something useful, maybe you can comment. So here again, you can click and open and load a different color list. So here I can go and say load increment list and let's say colorblind safe eight and make that my default. Okay, that's my simple edge color. I click close and then if I come back to my data and if I take the same data and do the same plot, okay, Go to basic 2D and do the same plot. You'll see now the, the color should be different. Maybe I changed the wrong list. So um, you have to change the line color. The line color follows the simple color and such. Anyways, the place to change is preferences, theme organizer, and here are all the lists. Okay, I should have changed the line color list because the symbol follows the line in that plot. So I can click here and load my palette and load my, um, sorry, not load palette, load increment list. And I'm gonna choose colorblind safe eight, click okay and click close. And then I come back and make plot, okay. Go to the plot menu and choose the same plot. Now the colors are different, right? Okay. All, all right, I'm running over time a little bit. I see many of you are staying along, so I'll take a few more minutes to show what's coming up in the new version. Um, before that, let me quickly show an app that's already available for you in existing version. We have a color editor app. As you know, we have over 200 apps that are free for download. They all have a minimum version requirement. Each is different. Color editor is available for many past versions. I click on color editor, it opens this template. Here I can do many things like load a palette, load a color list. So for example, I can load a color list and I can load say my colorblind safe eight list, okay? And then I can even take this and say interpolate this list, make it into 256 colors, okay? So now I have a nice gradation of colors. Then I can say, save this as a palette. Okay, then I can give it my color blind save palette. Okay, then I can later use this palette in my 3D plots and contour plots and such. This is a nifty tool. It also shows you luminance and lightness and such. So if you're into making colors and palettes, 
this is a nice tool and we might keep improving this. Okay. In the next version, we have a few nifty features coming up. So let me just switch to uh, origin 2021. Origin 2021 will be published in uh, um, October of this year. So one of the features is pick a color from an image. Okay. And another feature is to, let me go back to the other one I forgot. Um, let me first show you color, uh, pick colors from an image. Okay, so I'm just going to click this to open a, a plus one journal, just some graph image that I found in a journal. So here there are some nice contour plots with colors that I would like to grab. I right click and I can uh, save image as and save this somewhere on, on my desktop, say, uh, and save and come back. And in 2021 version, we have greatly improved our capability for embedded Python. So I'm going to open a Python sample that we are shipping. If you are interested in playing with this, you can email us and ask for a beta version. We are currently at beta three level. So I'm going to the Python folder. Keep in mind, you do not have this in your version. This is a, a beta version of the upcoming version of origin, okay? So I'm going to choose this extract image color sample, okay, and load that. And what this does, it uses a certain package. I have already loaded that package that's available for Python to read colors from an image. So I'll just run code and I'm going to go get the code, uh, get the image. Here's my image and click open. What it did, what it does now is to grab all the colors in that particular plugin and you see everything came in. Okay, let me just make this a little larger so you can see. Obviously, in that image, there were also titles and other things. So maybe I don't want the black color. I can go delete that row. Maybe I don't want the light color. I can cl right click on that and delete that row. I can then select this column. And in the new version, we have a save as increment list. So I can just simply click, click that and uh, give it a name from plus one journal. Okay, so that's a nifty feature coming up. And we might hook this up into the color editor so that the color editor will have a button to say grab in, uh, colors from an image. Okay. Another thing that is coming up, which uh, I want to quickly show, is that we will support more palette types. Somebody asked this earlier. So we are working on adding support for many different palettes. So I have here some. Uh, palettes such as ACO file, ACT file, SOC file. We'll even support XML files and, of course, PAL file. So if I drag one of these palettes and drop it into 2021, it will tell me this file has been, uh, palette has been successfully installed. Then if I go look in my palette selection, it will be available there. So if you have certain products that you work with and you want to bring the palettes over from that product into origin, let us know what format it is. And perhaps you can send us some sample. You can uh, email tech support and then we can help you help implement that for future version uh, of origin coming up in 2021. So at this point, let me switch over to my colleague, uh, Jen, she's going to bring up a polling. Uh, we request that you take a few moments to give us feedback on this webinar. Also, what other to topics you would like to see in the future? Again, I, I went through quite a bit here. I apologize. It was sort of an overview and maybe too much. If there is a certain area that you want to focus on, for example, let's say one session on just contour and 3D plots and heat maps. We are happy to do that. So that's the kind of feedback we are looking for. Okay, so please go ahead and take a few moments to give us your valuable feedback. And please come back and join us for future webinars. The chat panel and the QA panel are still open. You can go there and type questions and we will continue to monitor. Thank you again for joining us today and have a great rest of today and have a great weekend.